David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Uh, it's been a while since I reviewed something from my personal collection. Uh, a few weeks back, I gave viewers a list of pens and asked which we would like to see reviewed. Um, after over 1,200 votes, there were two clear favorites which emerged and were actually tied for the top spot. The Sailor King of Pen in Royal Tangerine and the Nakaya Decapod Twist. Uh, the only thing that surprised me, though, was uh, I thought the Visconti Blue Ripple might get a few more votes. I'll need to get around to reviewing that one, too, at a later date. But for now, I need to get to the two which tied for the lead. And today, I'm going to knock one off the to-do list, the Nakaya Decapod Twist. What I'm going to do today is share a little background about the interesting company which is Nakaya, go over the parts and features of the Decapod Twist, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. First of all, uh, in regard to how the name of the company is pronounced, most Westerners pronounce it Nakaya, but I understand that technically the correct way is more like Nakaya, with the A sounding the same throughout. Uh, it's one of those Japanese names where I think it's just much easier for Westerners like myself to say Nakaya. And in the pen world, I would say that either pronunciation is acceptable, so I'm going to stick with what's easier for me. Uh, now, I went over a bit of history about Nakaya in my review of the Dorsal Fin 2, the other Nakaya that I have in my collection, uh, but since that was over three years ago, I felt it was worth talking about again. Uh, Nakaya is the original name of the Platinum Pen Company uh, when it was founded back in 1919. I just love this old picture of some of the original Platinum employees. Um, I like the contrast of the two gentlemen in the front, uh, one with more modern clothes and the other with more traditional attire. Except for he's wearing socks with his sandals. Um, I'm pretty certain that that was a fashion crime even back in 1919. Nakaya was founded by Toshia Nakata, who is the grandson of the gentleman who founded the Platinum Pen Company. Uh, here is a picture of Toshia. Uh, back in 2003, a blogger by the name of Russ Stutler visited the Nakaya headquarters in Tokyo and was nice enough to give me permission to use a couple of the photos that he took. Now, that's a picture of a hard-working man. Uh, sleeves rolled up, shirt coming undone, clipboard in hand. He looks like someone who was kind enough to stop for a picture, but in the back of his mind was thinking about all the work he needed to get to. Uh, Toshio's father was the president of Platinum back in the 1990s when the company had a bit of an issue. Many of its most experienced and skilled craftsmen retired. Uh, realizing the incredible loss of skill, Toshio formed Nakaya, a company that is a wholly owned subsidiary of Platinum, but operates as an independent company. Um, here's a picture of some of the staff. In an industry which at times can focus on mass production, Nakaya is focused on individual craftsmanship. Okay, let's actually take a look at a pen. It arrives in this box. It has some nice textured paper on it. And inside there is a nice softwood box. Um, according to the translator app on my phone, this either says special fountain pen or god pear old brush. I think it's probably the former rather than the latter. The top lifts off and inside we have a couple of things. There is a box of 10 platinum cartridges and then in, we have this kimono style seat sleeve. Um, it does have a tag on it which it says Nakaya in Japanese. And then inside we have a pen. This is the Nakaya Decapod Twist in Akatamanuri. Uh, the pen is made from hand-turned ebonite, which is then layered with Arushi lacquer. Uh, the distinctive feature of this pen are the twisting facets. There are 10 facets which aren't twisted drastically. I'll say they're more subtle twists. From beginning to end, the facet twists approximately one quarter of the circumference of the pen. Arushi lacquer is applied in layers, and the striped look is accomplished by having a brighter color underneath a darker shade of reddish brown. And then through polishing the edges, the underlying colors become exposed. It's an amazing look. I love it. Uh, Nakaya pens are pieces of great art and craftsmanship. Uh, created by artisans with decades of experience, uh, each of whom makes pens not because they have to, 
because they want to. Um, it's my understanding that the craftsmen don't work on a salary or on an hourly basis. They're paid for the pens that they complete. And the amount they produce is determined by the individual craftsmen, not the number of back orders for that specific pen. They make what they want to make, and when they choose not to make a particular model any longer, then it's gone. Uh, this can lead to some very long wait times in order to receive one of their pens. In regard to this particular pen, I had to wait about 10 months. Let's take a look at the cap. The top is flat, uh, and then this transitions into the clip. You can purchase these pens with or without a clip. At the time I purchased this pen, I wasn't that into clipless pens. Well, I don't feel this clip distracts from the overall look of the pen, and it functions very nicely. Um, if I had to do it over again, uh, I wouldn't include the clip. I think it breaks up the overall flow of the pen just a little bit. The cap tapers up. There's no traditional cap band or exterior branding on the pen. Um, I really like the transition from cap to barrel. The confluence of colors and facets is pretty cool. Then the barrel tapers down to an end, which, like the top of the cap, is flat. The cap twists off with just over a single rotation, and underneath we have a 14 karat gold nib. Uh, Nakaya nibs are made by platinum. Uh, the nib on this particular pen, as well as the other Nakaya I have in my collection, are rather stiff. Um, they don't have too much bounce and have a fair amount of feedback to them. Uh, neither provides a buttery smooth writing experience, but buttery smoothness isn't necessarily everything when it comes to nib performance. Uh, this nib is available in a wide variety of colors and sizes. There is extra extra fine, extra fine, fine, soft fine, medium, soft medium, broad, extra broad, and music. And here's a look at the plastic feed. While I really don't have an opinion about the benefits of an ebonite feed over a plastic one, aesthetically, I just like the look and texture of ebonite feeds, and one of those might have matched better with the artisan craftsmanship on this pen. The section begins with the flare, and then angles up until you reach the threads. Then there is a back portion which is straight until a rather large step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, I find this section to be very comfortable. The large flare helps me maintain a solid grip when I'm using this pen, and the large step up is far enough back that it doesn't impede my grip in any way. Um, I also like the feeling of the facets on my hand. Uh, while the cap does post, I would not recommend it. It sits on there rather deeply, but it's not designed to be secure. Plus, Arushi lacquer is a natural material. Um, I don't feel comfortable posting any of my Arushi pens I have in my collection in fear that it might mark up the surface. Um, I haven't experienced that on any of my pens, but I try to be cautious in that regard. Um, the pen is comfortable in the hand. Uh, it is fairly light, and at times a lack of weight can make a pen feel a bit on the cheap side, but that's not the case with this pen. And uh, I like the, how the uh, polished Arushi feels on my hand as well. The pen accepts proprietary platinum cartridges and a converter is provided. The pen arrives with a standard platinum converter, but for an additional fee, you can purchase a converter with a Mackie painting on it. Uh, they offer several varieties. The one I have in this pen is a Tadpole, and in my other Nakaya, the Dorsal Fin 2, I have the Goldfish. Uh, there's a little water in there because I had just cleaned the converter out. The only issue I have with these converters is that once you get ink in them, it's rather difficult to see the painting, but these are nice little extras. The cap threads are double entry, meaning that you pretty much have a 50-50 chance of achieving the proper alignment when capping the pen. If you don't get it on the first try and that's something that would annoy you, it's simple enough to back the threads up a single entry point in order to line everything up correctly. The current price for this pen is $850, and in looking back at my emails, that's the very same price I purchased this pen for a little over five years ago. Uh, and there was no additional cost to add the clip. The version of this pen with straight facets sells for $750. Uh, both models are some of the, mo the least expensive models that Nakaya offers. Uh, Nakaya offers premium, handcrafted pens, and their prices are warranted. Um, I haven't regretted the purchase of this or my other Nakaya model, which costs a fair amount more money. Uh, when you are purchasing a Nakaya, you are purchasing a piece of art and craftsmanship. You're not just buying a pen. 
Um, some people might collect and appreciate art which you could hang on the wall. Well, this is a piece of art that you could put in your pocket and you can use. Uh, and you get to interact with the art, which makes it that much more personal. And you'll feel more of a connection with it. Um, I haven't regretted the purchase of this pen at all. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Nakaya Decapod Twist. Again, just to give you a closer look at the finish on here. I know it's tough to see with the lights, but I just love the shading and striping as well as the twist of this pen. So it's one of my favorites. In regard to some other Arushi pens, here it is with a Namiki Emperor. Uh, and then here it is with my other Nakaya, which is the Dorsal Fin 2. Uh, and then another very large pen, which is the Danny Trio Genkai. Will it even fit in here? Yes. But that's what it looks like in comparison to some other Arushi pens. Here's one more Arushi pen from Watcher. This is their Dream Pen. Uh, and then here is a pen from Gravitas, uh, which is the Skittles. And finally, a pen from Cross, which is the Peerless 125, which in my opinion is a really underrated pen. And this is the uh, Darth Vader version of that pen. In regard to an uncapped comparison, uh, here it is with the uh, Wancher. And then here it is with the Nakaya Dorsal Fin 2. And here it is with the Namiki Emperor. Here we go with the writing sample for the Nakaya Decapod Twist. This is a medium 14 karat gold nib. And the ink I'm using is one that I really like to pair with a lot of my uh, Akatamanuri pens, which is Franklin Kristoff. Uh, terra Firma. This is what the ink looks like. It's a really nice uh, reddish brown that I think matches the Akatamanuri finish really well. Unfortunately, this is an ink that they have discontinued. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Diamine Ancient Copper and another really cool ink, which is Papier Plume number 11. This is what the bottles look like. Uh, they're really nice, large bottles uh, and you can, with a nice uh, large mouth and you can get any nib in there whatsoever. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. As I mentioned during the review that um, this nib as well as the um, the nib on my other Nikaya is are rather stiff. They don't have lots of bounce to it. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation, but this medium nib does write very much like a uh, Western fine. Um, I find the ink flow to be decent on this pen. And in regard to reverse writing, I'd say it's slightly scratchy, but it gets the job done. In regard to some fast writing, the feed has no issue in keeping up. 
So here we have the Nakaya Decapod Twist. Um, if you are looking to get a Nakaya, as I mentioned, this is one of the lesser expensive models. Uh, and so it's a good entry point into the brand. Um, I think it has a unique and inter interesting look. Um, and I just love the, uh, the twists as well as the uh, Arushi treatment on this pen. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.